I believe that the whole United States is mourning with me. And if the death of my son can mean something to the other unfortunate people all over the world, then for him to have died a hero would mean more to me than for him just to have died. Emma Till, 14, was kidnapped and killed allegedly for wolf whistling at the wife of accused Roy Bryan. Emmett Till, a black teenager from Chicago, Illinois, was born on July 25, 1941. Not long after his birth, his parents separated. And a few weeks before his fourth birthday in 1945, Emmett's father was executed for the rape and murder of an Italian woman. At the age of six, Emmett contracted polio, which left him with a persistent stutter. Though he had this stutter, Emmett's mother said that he was industrious. He loved to help do chores at home, although he sometimes got distracted. His mom remembered that at times he seemed to not know his own limitations. Following a short marriage between his mom and his stepfather, at 11 years old, after the stepfather came and threatened Emmett's mom, he picked up a butcher knife and told his stepdad that he would kill him if he did not leave. His mother said that he was usually a very happy person. He liked to pull pranks and, and joke a lot. And in his free time, he loved pickup games of baseball. And they also said that he was a sharp dresser and loved being the center of attention. In 1955, Emmett was a stocky and muscular teenager, weighing 150 pounds and stood five feet, four inches tall. On August 24th, 1955, Emmett and his cousin Curtis Jones skipped church where his uncle was preaching and joined some local boys as they went to Bryant's grocery and meat market to buy candy. While at this store, Emmett encountered a 21-year-old white woman by the name of Carolyn Bryant. It's not just that they discover his body and that he's been killed. He has been brutally, brutally beaten. As a criminal defense attorney, when we look at crimes, we often try to put together a picture about what happened. And it takes a lot of hatred and a lot of rage to do the kind of violence that was done to Emmett Till. Being a black boy in the American South could be quite perilous. The allegation that Emmett Till was being social with a white woman was considered an affront, a threat to the racial order. And I think the shock of his death was compounded by the brutality of his death. Emmett's mother couldn't actually conform to the conventions of the time, and she did something really quite remarkable. She made the really unorthodox choice of having a funeral with an open casket that was going to be very widely publicized, that was going to be attended by the national press. She wanted civil rights leaders and political leaders to see what they did to her child.
Now the details of that day are pretty different based on who's telling the story. So whether Emmett really flirted with Miss Bryant or whistled at her is not known. But what happened four days later is. On August 28th, 1955, a day that I won't forget because that's my birthday. Bryant's husband, Roy, and his half-brother, Milo, went to Emmett's great-uncle's house and snatched him from the house. Those men beat Emmett, they shot Emmett, they strung barbed wire and a 75-pound metal fan around his neck and dumped his lifeless body in the Tallahatchie River. Bryant and his half-brother, J.W. Milam, were acquitted by this jury. And subsequently, even though they admitted taking the boy from the house, they were freed of kidnap charges. The inability to hold anyone accountable for his murder and the comfort with which the men who killed him were able to talk about the violence was just adding to the injury. On September 23rd, 1955, an all-white, all-male jury, both women and blacks had been banned from participating. This jury acquitted both defendants after a 67 minute deliberation, one juror said, if we hadn't stopped to drink soda pop, it wouldn't have taken that long. In November, 1955, a grand jury declined to indict Bryant and Milam for kidnapping, despite their own admissions of having taken Emmett Till. In 1956, Bryant and Milam struck a deal with Look Magazine to tell their story to a journalist named William Bradford Huey for an amount between $3,600 and $4,000. During this interview, Bryant and Milam told a story that their attorneys had never heard before. They admitted to killing Emmett Till. In 2017, author Timothy Tyson released details of a 2008 interview with Miss Carolyn Bryant, in which she disclosed that she had fabricated most of her testimony regarding Emmett Till. Tyson said during the interview, Bryant retracted her testimony that Emmett had grabbed her around her waist, saying that those parts were not true. The judge ruled her testimony inadmissible. In this 2008 interview, the then 72-year-old Bryant said that she could not remember the rest of the events. She also said that Nothing that that boy did could ever justify what happened to him.